Hello there, internet friends. This is Danielle Pierce, the creator of Real Estate Profit Lab and founder of Property Preservation Mastery. As always, come into the room, say hey, let me know where you're watching from. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share wherever you are watching this video, whether that be Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. All right, so if you guys have been living, if you haven't been living under a rock, and you know that we're doing a new campaign this month, a video series. Uh, it's called Preservation During the Pandemic. And we're talking about recent student success stories from folks who are starting and or scaling their business during the pandemic. We got students who have are juggling new babies, new businesses, and still managing to hit $6,600 a month in revenue. Students juggling full-time jobs, multiple businesses, um, got a late start and still crossed over the $6,000 mark in revenue last month. Students juggling their business and homeschooling their children. One person who registered almost two years ago that is just now finally pulling the trigger and recently had our first four figure month. So that is what we're doing uh, all for the next, you know, several days or so. The campaign officially ends June the 16th. So with that being said, many of you have asked for discount codes. So guess what? We're introducing six discount codes valued between two to five hundred dollars off of the full price program. Property Preservation Mastery is $2,497 and worth every penny, I should add. To get those discount codes, though, you do have to be on our email list. If you're not on the list, head to propertypreservationmastery.com ASAP. I'm going to announce the value of each discount code on a special live Q&A session I'm hosting on Wednesday, June 16th at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Details are going out via email. All discount codes expire at midnight, June 16th, Central Standard Time. We are going to leave these videos up for posterity because you guys need to see what's possible and what our students have been able to, to accomplish during the pandemic. Just know that if they're making these types of strides during the pandemic, that the sky is the limit. So the videos are going to stay up. However, the codes will not be valid beyond June 16th. We're thinking about putting something together for those of you who are late to the party who come and watch this series, say, one month or six months or 12 months from now. But we'll have that figured out over the next several days or so. All right. So buckle up. Get ready to hear directly from the students themselves and drop your questions in the comments so I can address them on June the 16th. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to, if I'm saying her name correctly, it is Elia Roddy. Uh, she'll be coming on in just a second to talk about how she's been able to juggle this new baby starting her business and who knows what else this woman has going on. So give me one second and I shall be right back. All righty. So I am back, you guys. I'm back with Elia Roddy of A-Plus Preservation. She is covering the Houston market. No, is it Houston? Yeah, Houston market. So she's out here in blazing hot Texas with the bad drivers like I am. And she has so much going on. She has, you know, her new preservation business. She has a new baby. She has teenagers. She has a toddler. Elia, mm -hmm. tell, 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 tell the people how you are able to do all this stuff. <laughs> By the grace of God. <laughs> Only. <laughs> Only by his grace. <laughs> really? So anything worse, like what do you have a specific schedule? Like what is your what does your day look like? Like how do you start your day? Well, I get up like normally like around four, four thirty, five o'clock. I usually try to have like some quiet time in the morning to try to just, you know, before I hit the day, I try to have some quiet time. And then um I'm out the house by 6.30 because I'm a teacher. So I drive to work. And then um, my day at school finishes about 2.45, 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So then when I get back home, you know, it's normally um, trying to figure out what's going on with the business. Sometimes I'm doing the business at school, too. So don't tell my school, but <laughs> it just is what it is, you know. Um, since school has been online, it's it's allowed a little bit more flexibility. So that's why I've been able to to do the business, you know, throughout the school day and everything. So it'll probably look a little different in the fall, but because of COVID and everything, and school been online, and for a minute I was at home, so I didn't have to drive to campus. So okay. it made it a little bit more easier. But now school is out. This was the last week of school, so I'm ready to go back to doing what I was doing before I had to juggle both the job and preservation. So, so when you yeah. say that sometimes you're, you're doing uh, the preservation stuff happens at work, is it is it more so, um, I mean, I know that it's a ton of emails, but is it more so the companies reaching out to you? Is it the contractors or is it just uh, a little bit of both? Um, mostly it's like, uh, because basically my husband, he's in the field, he does the field work. Okay. So sometimes it's me looking at whatever he did and pushing it through. 
okay. or sometimes it's on the phone with the reps um, at Guardian and, you know, trying to figure out um, like what we need to be approved or uh, what we need for a certain job. So it's a little bit of both. Sometimes it's just me on the computer looking at photos. And then other times it's me on the phone with the reps, you know, talking about, you know, specific work orders and stuff like that. Okay. So when did you officially launch? We launched in January. January. Oh, January. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You guys. We did our first work order. Um, I registered December, I believe December 1st. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you were you were somebody who was like flying through. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this woman doing? <laughs> She's like, okay, I'm done, done, done with that. Okay, 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 what's next? I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what was what were your thoughts when you got your very first work order? Okay, so our very first work order was a winterization, and it was out in the middle of nowhere. It was in like Alaska, Texas, or something like that. Like a whole like an hour and a half away, or something like that. And but it was a mobile home too, so like. It was a mess. Like it was like a hoarder's property. Like it was just a hot mess. And it, it was just like, what? Like this is real. <laughs> you know, like this is what it's gonna be like. Okay. What did your husband say? He was like, it was he, he said that, you know, people was coming up to him trying to tell him, like, you know, this is this is so and so's property. Um, they were basically trying to tell him like the situation of what happened. Right. He was just like, I'm just here to do a organization. <laughs> like, I'm just here to like with the property management company. Like, I'm just here to, you know, work on the property because like people was trying to buy the property. It was a it was an eyesore in the neighborhood. They were trying to get rid of it. Like, so they they were like, Are you gonna get rid of it? Like, are you gonna come and clean it up? He was just like you know, uh, you might have to contact the city for this or contact Guardian. And like, he would point them to the number on the, on the post and everything. And yeah, so that, that was the first one. <laughs> that is hilarious. So, yeah. Right, so you're a full-time teacher. Your husband, is he working full-time still too? Or is he doing this full-time? This is what he's doing full-time. Full-time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what made you decide to start your, to do preservation? Like what was the, the, the prompt for that? Well, I found I found you out through um what's her name? We Mom did. True tried to shoot mom true. jobs. Yeah. yeah. So I saw her post with you and um I asked my husband, I was like, have you ever heard of preservation? And he was just like, No, but what is it? Because you know, we've heard about it, we've heard it all. Like we yeah. tried to, you know, do wholesaling with real mm-hmm. estate, and I dabbled in, I tried to dabble in commercial um investing before. Mm-hmm. So we've we've known about real estate for a long time, but we've never known about preservation. Gotcha. Okay. So when I first saw that video, I was just hooked. I was like, we we gotta find out what this is all about, like what it is. I was watching the webinar and then I went and like did my own little research yeah. and we got into like getting on YouTube and seeing like what's out there and everything. But my husband has done construction for the last like 20 years. Uh-huh. So he's always been in the industry um, and he's always wanted to be able to do his own thing. Just, we just never knew the route in. Yeah. So once I showed it to him, he was just like, yeah, go for it. Like, get it fired up. Get it going. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, get it started. Right. So like, get it started. Right. Then let me know when it's done. That sounds right. about right. Like. Exactly. So um, you had your little special going on, and I wasn't ready to, like, go full in. So okay. I think I did the um, the partial. The partial. Yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did that. And so after I saw that, I was like, okay, yeah, she legit. Like, let's go. So, <laughs> Um, I invested into the full program. I was like, dang, I wish I would have just invested into it first. So I wouldn't have to pay the extra. But anyways, after we did the live summit, I was like, all right, cool. So after I just got into it, like just, you know, full on. And he's just like, get it started. Get it started. Like he was behind me, like, get it going, get it going, get it going. Okay. And like for me, like this was not my um, area of expertise. Yeah. So the whole time I'm going through it, like I'm nervous. I'm like, 
anxious, like, well, how is this going to work out? And how is that going to work out? And how is this going to work? He was like, listen, I know what I'm doing. Just get it going. Get it going. Like, you just yeah, I think you had a lot of what if scenarios. Like, well, what, yeah. what about this? And what yeah, it's like, I, my mind is, I have to be able to put two together, one yeah. to one together. Like, it has to make sense for me like that. But for him, it was just like, you know, just get it going. I know what I'm doing. Just get it going. So, <laughs> yeah, having him behind me was like, you know, pushing me forward so, so I could just get it going. Oh, it that's me. so good, though. That's yeah. So, good. yeah. So, aside from your husband, are you working with anybody else, like family and friend wise? Um, nope, it's just us. It's okay. basically like a family business right now because the teens they go out there with them, and we. Well, I've been out there too. Okay, I've been out there doing the trash outs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I can listen. I I just I cannot stand. It. I don't like being dirty. I don't like bugs. I don't like hoarders. And you see some atrocious things at these properties. You like people live here? Like people like, live like that? Like it's 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 kind of crazy. Like how did this property get like this? Like what happened? The ones with fifty dogs and it's just dog feces. It's just disgusting. Yes, rats and everything. <laughs> yeah, mold and just all types of stuff. So. Yeah, I've been out there a few times. I don't go out there often, you know, now that I got my baby, but I've yeah, been out there. Out there. <laughs> it's in the wilderness. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just like a family business right now. Yeah. That's so cool. So, you guys just crossed, I think your post in the alumni group was, was it 6,500? 6, 6,600. 6, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and that's again, really fast, right? Because you're still basically not even within the first six months, right? What's, right. Your, um, what's your end goal? Because I think you said what, the next goal is 10K? Yes. Okay. Honey, we're trying to get to about what you said, 12 to 18 months, yep. six figures. Okay. <laughs> well, you're on the way, right? 6,600 is 75,000, we'll say, per year. And, and that's better than 85% of most Americans, I think it's yeah, and the thing that I can see now is that because when we hopped into it, we were like right in the middle of the moratorium. So yeah. it really wasn't a whole lot going on. Yeah. And it's just, and it's still not a whole lot going on because a lot of the companies that we're on board with, I follow up with them and they let us know like, you know, because of the moratorium, we still don't have nothing going. And, you know, Houston is one of our our biggest yes. areas, you know, and so like it was just how slow it went. It was just like in the beginning, it was like frustrating. But you know, now that things are moving, and now that we realize it's because of the moratorium and because of the pandemic, it's like okay, we're in a great position. And when everything is going back up, we will be ready to like you know get to that ten. I'm like twenty, you know. 20k a month for sure you know that's that's the goal for sure yeah because the thing about Mm -hmm. it is like if you can make it through this and you have right the pandemic then Mm -hmm. nothing else really is gonna be a problem right like you already made it through like the hardest strictest like least amount of work available part in the the yeah yeah you guys will be in fantastic shape so i saw that i was like i knew it i'm not surprised (laughs) at all (laughs) yeah 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 what challenges have you had that what's been a, a challenge for you? I would say just that, you know, being a brand new when you first start a business, because when we first started, wasn't a whole lot going on. It was just inspections. Yeah. And so the inspection is like $10, you know, 10, they want $10, $15. Like that was the most frustrating thing in, in learning, you know, the client and what they want as far as the photos and yeah. stuff like that. And, um, that just like learning how to read the photos and stuff and look at them and see what they're looking for. That that's kind of been the most frustrating for me. Cause just like, Oh, this is annoying. Like going through like 200, 300 photos, like it's yeah. tedious. And it can be annoying. Yeah. Um, but really I, I feel like that has been the most challenging. Then once we kind of was like, okay, if this is causing the stress, you know, like what you said, like if it's causing you stress, if it's too much, if it's making you anxious or whatever, don't do it. Yep. So we finally was just like, look, if they're not going to give us $25 for these inspections, we're not going to do them. Yeah. So we just started turning them down and declining them. And once we started turning them down and declining them, that's when we started to get like maintenance orders. Yep. And the maintenance orders is where like the money is at. Yeah. So, um, just just 
saying taking this business and not looking at it as an employee because you know when you're an employee you feel that pressure like well if I don't do something they might fire me something don't happen you know once you get rid of that employee mindset and understand that this is a business you're a business owner you know you're not working for them you know they're you know right exactly so once you just get that right mentality and lose the anxiety and the worry and all that and the stress, just everything starts opening up. It yeah. just starts happening naturally. So I think I remember saying a few times, like, you know, nothing's going to happen if you say no, right? You know, they, they, they can't do nothing to you, right? right. Is, this, is this your first business or you guys first business? What's your experience with that? Um... Well, for me, I kind of been like a serial entrepreneur. I've done like everything. I did five legs. <laughs> me too. I made five hundred dollars, and I was like, "Okay, I'm out." <laughs> right, exactly. So I kind of did a little bit. And I've always had that kind of entrepreneur spirit, and just try to, you know, find different routes and and see what sticks and what works and everything. So I've he did he I think he. He's never really had like his own business business, but he's tried, he's had business ideas too. So we kind of have always been in the same mindset of like, let's start a business, let's start a business, let's start a business. But, you know, not going for the hundred dollar coupon type business, (laughs) the the multi-level marketing business that just want to suck your money and not, you know, give you nothing back. But this has been like the true, most legit business that we've we've ever had a store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was like, once you get it, then you got it. So now I don't know if you uh, were able to watch the video of the alumni group a couple of weeks ago, but I gave a lot of companies to partner with. And since your husband has that construction background, I think you guys will do really well with um, some of those options too, like the the companies that own all the rental properties throughout the country. Yeah, the American Homes for Rent. Yeah. 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 We're actually written for them right now. So Yeah, crazy, <laughs> right? Like if you right. look at that... <laughs> I mean, these companies are literally buying like 40,000 properties around. Wow. It is insane. And so wow. there are some drawbacks to that, too. Right. Because they, you know, they don't have the best reputation sometimes. And yeah. Um, and they raise the market values. Right. Because they don't care mm-hmm. about nickel and diamond for a house. They're like whatever, we're going to buy 10,000. So just tell us how much it costs and we'll pay it. Yeah, but I think a lot of opportunity will be there because I don't think that market is going anywhere. I think that's kind of the future. Um, yeah, we're looking into that one. And then we, um, Resi Pro, I think that was one that you had put in the in the course a while back. Yeah, Resi Pro. Yeah, a while back. So we're on board with them too. They they're just kind of like uh, well, just now getting properties in Houston. So okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, we're on board with quite a few. We're on board with. MSI, Brookstone, uh, First Allegiance, Resi Pro. I don't okay. Yeah, so it's just, but we've only been working with one company that's yeah. been giving us work to do, which is Guardian. So, yeah, but yeah. that's all you need, though, is really one or two good companies because um, they do all have, I mean, the requirements are pretty similar, but some companies are, as you know, a lot more pickier than others. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And some, I think, are a lot easier to work with than others, too, though. So that's something. Yeah. To um, what's your plan? Like, do you plan to expand outside of Houston? Do you pl- what, what do you plan on doing, Aaliyah? Um, well, our plan right now is to stay in Houston. And okay. we kind of we want to move into, like, remodeling. That's where okay. that's where he wants to take it long, long, long term. So um, we've hired a few con- subcontractors just for certain jobs. But we eventually want to start getting people on our team so yeah. we can just, you know, have them. So that's the next step, really, is to um, get, like, maybe, like, one or two other people on our team. Um, and Houston is pretty big because we do Harris County. We do Fort Bend, yeah. um, Fort Bend, Brazoria County. So basically just tying down these counties around Harris County. And because Harris County is so huge, like, it's kind of like you can be good. Just doing Harris County, so yeah, I didn't know Houston yeah. was that big until well, until I started getting work in Houston, and then I would I would call contractors and try to get them to do something. They're like, oh, it's in Houston, like so you should be good. He's like, oh, that's like an hour away. I'm like, what? right, right, <laughs> exactly, because we're south, so it's like if you're talking about going north, it's just like, oh, that's out of our area. <laughs> north is like an hour away, so yeah, yeah. So we're just focusing on Harris County, Fort Bend, um, Brazoria County, and We've gone 
so south as far as Bay City, um, we've done Bay City, which is Matagorda County, but um, basically just thriving here in the county that we are, yeah. are in and then growing our team from, from this area. Yeah. What is driving you, Elia? Like, what is your, because I see, if I'm not correct, mistaken, I should say, I see some affirmations and looks like some other stuff behind oh, you. Yeah. What's driving you? What's your, what's, what's pushing you? What's driving me is the dream, you know, financial freedom. Um, I got some student loan debts for my master's, so I want to get that paid off. Um, working on becoming a homeowner. Um, you know, I have two small children that, you know, I just want to be a, um, an example to them that, you know, hey, you know, you can do it. You can be your own business owner. You know, if you want to go to college, you can. Like, I was privileged to get a scholarship to college. I played basketball in college. Oh, what position did you play? I played four in Power Center. Oh. Yeah. Wait, how tall are you? <laughs> oh, God. I'm 6'1". one. Six You're 6'1"? One. Oh. I'm 6'1". Yep. Oh, that's yep. so cool. I, yeah, I like right. this. I played at the University of Kentucky, so go oh. Wildcats. <laughs> yeah. When the last time you played basketball? Hmm, maybe like four years ago. Four years ago. I don't, really, I don't really get out there and play basketball like that no more. I do exercise, though. I exercise. That's my thing. But I don't really get out there and play basketball too much. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I was just curious. So sorry, to I play basketball, too. I played forward as well. And I you did? Basketball. What? Oh, my God. Yeah. I play with my okay. son and uh and beat him every night. He only nine though, so <laughs> oh you you talking about that. I thought you were talking about like some real pickup games, like oh that like <laughs> oh, no, no, I ain't played no pickup game child in years. Okay, yeah, like that, like shooting around in the yeah, probably like a month ago. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. But like pickup pickup games, running up and down the court. Like, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll be woe out playing out there. <laughs> Telling you. A full body workout. I know it is. It is. That's all you need. Get up and down that court. You'll be good. Okay. So what's driving you? We were talking about that. Yeah. So, you know, um, that financial freedom where I don't have to work a job, you know, and I can travel. And my family is in Ohio. Most of my family is in Ohio. We're like really the only ones here in Texas. So, you know, being able to go visit my family more often and during holidays if I want to or you know just just having that financial freedom where I never have to work a job mm-hmm. and I can still be good and um work towards passive income and things like that so that's the goal for sure okay. yeah so mm-hmm. your job what you said you're a teacher um mm-hmm. is it is it stressful is it um have you been doing it a long time um, kind of- no teaching is not stressful I enjoy it I enjoy teaching I, I work with um high schoolers, sophomores. Um, but I just don't, I don't really see myself as like a 30 year retiring from teaching type, you know, that's really not me. Like my, my dreams, my goals are a little bit bigger. And so it's great that I'm a teacher. I'm thankful for it. It's not, it's not really that I hate teaching or nothing like that. It's just that, you know, I'm ready to move on and do other things and have a little bit more freedom, you know? Where would you be if you, um, like, if, if money wasn't an issue, time, like, no, if there were no constraints or issues, like, where in the world would you be and what would you even be doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe I would have, I would maybe do, like, maybe motivation or inspiration. Um, maybe get my little YouTube channel fired up and stuff like that and, you know, I'd be maybe travel with my mom and help her out a little bit because she's had to work a lot, you know, and um, maybe be able to give her a little bit more freedom with her time and give her a little bit more uh, time away from the stress of just working and things like that. So I don't know, probably traveling, you know. Yeah, for sure. Traveling. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 34. 34, 34. okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And your mom's still working? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's still working. She she nowhere near retirement, but um, she's doing what she feels she's called to do. She's yeah. she's working in um, the substance abuse uh, for career field where she counsels and she does counseling with uh, she does one on one counseling, marriage and therapy, marriage and family therapy, and stuff like that. So that's a hard field. 
Yeah, it is. And so she she loves it. She feels like it's her calling, but it's very stressful too. And it's very time consuming because you have to take notes and stuff like that. So yeah, it's hard. And you battle. I mean, everybody's battling demons, but I think when substance substance abuse is involved, you just never know what you're dealing with. Um, my brother had a long time uh, drug problem since like. Yeah. High school, if I had to pinpoint it, high school. And he recently yeah. passed away. Um, we found out like in November. Uh, so like maybe six, seven months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and he had just gotten out of uh, jail again. And he, he was out, had been out of jail two weeks and he had been in there six years. So two mm. weeks after he got out, he uh, overdosed on something. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, uh, me and my brother actually have no two people that we grew up with who had an overdose and died. So it's a huge thing that's really affecting our community for sure. And uh, my husband has some family members that struggle with it and yeah. So, How do you deal with it though? Like for, for you, and especially since your mom has training in it, like there's you know, a lot of the average black family be like, oh, they can't come here, leave them alone. When they need help, they'll get, you know what I mean? Like, what do y'all do? Well, I know, you know, just some of the things that from my, what my mom has told me, like, uh, just encouraging them to get the help that they need, you know, and, and, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, just, you know, get the help and don't, don't basically don't isolate yourself. Cause I, I feel like that's the thing that leads to people overdosing and things like that. It's just isolating themselves, not feeling like they have anybody there for them that cares for them that they can talk to. So I would just say, you know, having somebody that you can talk to, maybe somebody that can hold you accountable. Um, basically somebody that you don't want to be around enablers, people who are going to enable you to just keep on, you know, doing that habit and supporting you in that habit. You need people who are going to be tough love, like, let's go get you some help. You're going to stay in rehab. You know, you're not going to go out of rehab or, you know, whatever. So yeah, I feel like people who, can hold you accountable and people who are can support you and help you through that. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give for anybody considering preservation? What would you tell them to do in terms of like pros, cons, what to look out for, what you've learned since January? What would you, what would you say? Well, I would tell them, you know, if it's going slow in the beginning, don't be discouraged because it's just, you know, the, the season and the time that you're going through. Um, I would say, um, hmm, yeah, that's the main thing. Like, don't don't get frustrated. Uh, just be patient, because I know a lot of times, like when you're starting something new, you just wanted to like jump off right, real real quick. Like, come on, you know, where's the money at? But you have to be patient. Um, you have to know that if you stick with it, it's coming. And also, I would say. Um, whatever clients that you're working with, uh, definitely ask for the business. Like, you know, ask them if they have anything that you can do, if, you, uh, if they have any work orders that you can help them with. Because I feel like that is what helped us because um, we were, we worked with so many different people in guard with Guardian. Like, we've talked to so many different people and that was the frustrating thing for me because it's just like, well, who am I supposed to be working with? Like, it was just so many different people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, finally, we we got to working with one person and start to build a relationship with that one person. That's when you know everything started to come and everything started to open up. So, I would definitely say try to build that relationship with one person. You know, if they do have you talking to multiple people, and um, definitely ask for the business. Yeah. So you know, to ask them if they have anything, you know, and you know, tell them what you can do and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So I hear consistency and um, building a relationship and yeah. in your mouth and asking for the business instead of just waiting for them to choose you out of the 700 companies that they have exactly. at their disposal. Um, yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. And then, like, you know, definitely show them that you can provide value to them, you yeah. know, and that you, you want to be the go to people that they should be working with, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. And funny enough, it also applies to any, every other industry too. People always yeah. like, I just started, nothing's happening. I was like, well, 
you've been, you know, you got to give it more than 90 days or right. even six months, right? And, but I mean, I know that because, you know, I, I kind of struggle with that still sometimes too. But then it's like, well, wait a minute, like, you're like brand new into this thing. Like, <laughs> give yourself yeah. some grace and, and some patience because most of us, you know, we have jobs and we've been working oh. for years, you know, yeah. with the same thing with no, yeah. no real changes. So, but I get it though, especially for a program that you spent money on. You're like, man, I need to get my money back. <laughs> I need my money back. Yeah, for sure. And you, know, you don't want to just be one of those things that you invested in and, you know, saw no return. Yeah. So you just got to give it time. You got to yeah. give it a little bit more time. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Right, so at home, a four month old, a two year old, a 15 year old, a 14 year old? 14, a 14 year old, a 15 year old. Mm-hmm. 14, 15 year old. Mm-hmm. So, do you anticipate the older ones getting into the business at all as far as helping out with like, because they could do grass cuts and maid services? Oh, they've, they've, they've already been out there. They've done it all. They've helped out with debris removals, uh, lawn. Yeah, they're, they're out there. So, <laughs> they're doing it all. Yeah. I love it. Do they complain or are they happy? Uh-uh, because we just gave them some money, so yeah. they ain't complaining. See? They're like, oh, that's this what this brand is giving us some money? Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and I bet they move a lot faster, too. I know when I have little kids work for me, I'll be like, yeah, y'all go ahead. Do you? They move faster, <laughs> yeah. And you can, you know, they can go live. Yeah. They can go live. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. They got to pay for as much money. They got to pay as much? Nope. <laughs> Give them a few hundred, and they good, you know. They happy. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so great. Let me see if I have yeah. any more questions for you, because so many people have asked me, like, well, what is, what is she doing? How is she? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I definitely wanted to say that this has been a bootstrap. Like, we've been bootstrapping this business, okay? Like, I, that's one of the things that I was wanting to say is that. When you're first getting started, you're trying to figure out how it's all going to work out. You know, like. And it's not going to be like a perfect situation. Like when your job, you know that you're going to be at work from like eight to yeah. two or eight to three. With this, it's like it could be all hours, you know, not the whole day, 24 hours. But I'm just saying like maybe one day I might be working on it an hour and another day I might be working on it two hours. But that two hours might have been at like six o'clock at night when I was free or, you know, so it's like you just have to be flexible. You have to really have a lot of flexibility. And then it's basically the good thing about it is is work around your schedule. So it's not like nothing is like super emergent, like has to be done exactly right now. So it's just like, well, if I got something going on, like I'm at work or I got to take my kids to the doctors, that can wait, you know, I'll get to it. So yeah, and then like a lot people are like, well, I can't do it by the deadline. What should I do? Did you try asking for an extension? Exactly. <laughs> oh, ask for an extension. We definitely have gotten extensions, you yep. know. So, you know, it's okay. So that that's one thing that I would say too, because when you're just getting started, you're trying to figure out how it's all going to work into whatever you got going on. And you just you just have to know that you'll fit it into your schedule based upon whatever you got going on. So that's the beauty of it. Because um, when I went back to work after I was on maternity leave, I was going to work. And my husband was staying here with the kids and babysitting the kids. And then he would go out after I got back and maybe do like three or four hours of work. And we got the work done. So like four hours of work, you know, you're not working a full yeah. eight hour day, you know, but you're getting it done in that time frame. So I would definitely say, uh, yeah, just know that it works around your schedule. So that was an adjustment for you. It sounds like, cause before, you know, it sounds like you're used to like a structure and you're like, okay, eight to two, this is when I work, but then you, but then it sounds like you adjusted to it and you realize it was, it was a blessing too, for me. Like that's the only way I want to do anything. Exactly. Give me a deadline. Let me figure it out. I don't need nothing. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And and when I say like bootstrapping, like for sure, like we just are working with the resources that we have and making it work. You yeah. know. And so I know when people are coming back, coming from that employee background, that employee mindset, you you like, I gotta have my printer. I gotta have my this. I gotta have my that. I got to like, go buy a pickup truck. I'll be like, no, please don't buy any of that exactly. stuff. <laughs> no, like, no, you're not going to have every single thing before you get started. You know, you just got to get started. And then the things that you need 
you'll get them as you go. You know, you don't want to just try to buy every single thing up front and then you'll be like, well, I didn't need this or I spent all this money in this and now I don't have money for this. So, yeah. You know what it reminds me of? It's like when you have your first baby. I know for me, child, I bought <laughs> the most useless things known to man. I, like, I need this. Oh, I got to have this. And then the baby grows so fast and you so literally fast. use none of it. it. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 It's just like that. Yeah. It's and that's funny because my second baby, I ain't even bother buying. <laughs> second baby, <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, less clutter, like everything, less contraptions sitting in the floor, like yeah, everything. taking up space. Because I hate clutter too. That's another one of my right. things. So yeah, I stopped all of that. I ain't even potty trained. Not after after the first. I don't even recall potty training the other two. I was just like they they just figured it out. Like I'm not. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's like that. Oh my goodness. All right, Elio. Well, thanks so much for agreeing to do this video. I know that you had to get your hair together and um <laughs> you said you're gonna post it on your YouTube channel, so that's gonna be great. I'll send yeah. you a link for that. And then any last words that you want people to know either about you, the business, your company, life in general. What would what, what advice would you or what would you want to say? Oh yeah, like in my post where I said I said we are tithers, so you know, just one thing that um, cause I have a friend, her, her husband do business and, um, she, she always tells me that they've always had increase in their business because they tied. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, um, that is where a lot of, I feel like any success I have in anything, I always attribute it to God. And I would say tithing is very important. So yeah, just being a tither and, uh, expecting that increase and it happens. So we're going to keep on tithing. And uh, I would encourage people, you know, tithe. If you're not a tither, start tithing. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank welcome. you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I appreciate your time. I'm so happy to see all this, the, the progress and things you've been doing and keep um, motivating and encouraging. Because the thing that I've noticed about the, any of the Facebook groups is that people may not comment, but they're mm -hmm. always watching. So yeah, yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For thank you. Me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for interviewing me. And thank you for you putting your course together. Because I you. mean, we would have never found preservation if it wasn't for you. So I thank you. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll you talk too. to you.